You ever watch Floyd Mayweather box throughout the years? He would always lose like two of the first three rounds to kind of bum sometimes. He lost two of the first three rounds to Conor McGregor, some guy who decided to try boxing. And then throughout the course of the fight, he would always figure out his opponent. It'd be the most boring fight you ever watch. You'd demand a refund. You'd never get the refund. You imagine that? Imagine the P. Oh, you know what? You're right, sir. It was boring. Here's your $120 back. And by the way, random side note has nothing to do with anything. Do you remember when they used to offer like the $120 HD pay-per-view and then the $99.99 standard pay-per-view? Who's doing that? Who's ordering the standard definition pay-per-view for $100 opposed to the $100? Who's dropping that much on a boxing fight and then say, yeah, you know what? We got to save that last 20. Let's just get this in 480p. I'm going to use Mayweather to feel good about myself. I'm going to claim that this early part of the playoffs is my giving a round or two to Conor McGregor. But in all seriousness, it's been a bad start to the playoffs for old Andy here. Some of these series, they've not played out the exact way that I thought they were. Now, I do believe Nashville has carried more of the play in that series. But when all is said and done, by hook or by crook, Vancouver's up 3-1. to one, And in order for Nashville to win the series, they'd have to go to Vancouver, win that game, then come back, win one, and then go back and win. That's very unlikely. And then in the Winnipeg, Colorado series, I really thought it was going to be home win, home win, home win, home win, home win, all the way to the end of the series because that's how good those teams were on home ice. But it's Colorado who's flexed their muscles both on the road and at home. And it's hard to see them losing game six. I can easily see them losing game five. Here's a little tease for tomorrow. But game six in Colorado, they're flying out there. So I had some bad reads on some of these series. They're not decided yet. Like, you know, everybody crowned Vegas champions in that series. Now, I do think Vegas is going to win that series as well. And we do have that game on the slate tonight. But maybe we're going to clean things up tonight because it is a Monday. And as I told you guys many times for many years, the best day of the week for sports bettors is Monday because you can pretend like the last week didn't happen. Monday is the worst day of the week for your standard nine to five chalk office people. And those people are completely commendable. That's what makes the world turn a guy in a cubicle. But for sports bettors, Monday's a great day because you start fresh. Last week's in the past and I live on the West Coast and I rub crystals. I'm going on ayahuasca. Say if it's in the past, it's not in the present, in the future. And we're looking ahead to Monday night where we got these Dallas Stars who did a great job in Game 3. And I just want to let you guys know, if you didn't watch the game, they thoroughly dominated the game. They dominated the game. And it was 2-2, and it was an overtime, and either team could have won it. And just a reminder about hockey, it's the only sport you can thoroughly dominate. If hitters are dominating in baseball, that team's scoring runs and winning. If a team is dominating on defense in the NFL or on up, that team is scoring. Hockey is the only sport you can dominate dominate the game from beginning to end and be in overtime fighting for your life still. So you can make good calls on a game, good call, but you still need the bounces to go your way. And which way will they go on this night? Well, one thing that I do believe is that teams who play very poorly do come out and their effort is amplified in that next game. You lose bad on home ice. You have a poor performance on their home ice. You could even look at the Kings playing last night. They lost to the Oilers. A low scoring game. Hey, kudos to the Oilers. Brace some defense, get some good goaltending, and he will start believing just a little bit. However, look at the Kings. 30 something shots on goal to 12. Why? Embarrassing performance the game before. Dallas, lackluster performance in game two. They came out flying in game three. Vegas was as flat as you can be, and now I'm expecting a little shift back in the other direction. So typically, when I see something like that, what I like to go with is the over-on saves for the opposing goalie. We had Logan Thompson under siege last game. I would expect a much better first period for the Vegas Golden Knights. So I'm going to start. That's a weird place to start, but with a little over-on Jake Ottinger saves. It's not my favorite play in that game. My favorite play in that game was something that I teased on Twitter and then eventually I put out as one of my 
few good picks from over the weekend. But something that I knew was going to hold back the Dallas Stars was putting old, slow Joe Pavelski on the first line. The fact that Robertson isn't fast in the first place, they were just a slow, unproductive line. Well, finally, I don't know if they heard my advice, but they bumped Pavelski down to the third line and promoted Wyatt Johnston up to the top line. That top line dominated that game. Wyatt Johnston, eight shots on goal. Robertson had to, I mean, the high danger chances of Dallas were through the roof. All of them would have had multi-points if it wasn't for Logan Thompson's unbelievable performance. So what I'm looking to do is bet against Joe Pavelski once again because the beautiful thing about hockey is you get prices. We're getting the Pavelski top line price still. And after one more game of putting up a bagel, then yeah, maybe they'll change it. But over the weekend, we got top line price for Joe Pavelski. And now we're still going to get top line price for Joe Pavelski. So I'm going to take the under on Pavelski's point. And then the flip side of that, you got Wyatt Johnston. He pumped eight shots towards the net. He is a great shooter, and he has guys in Hints and Robertson who can find him the puck. I like the over two and a half shots for him once again. Not the best price in the world, but the way that Hints was repeatedly looking for him, I think that could be another combo to go to a Hints assist, which is going to be a good price, and a Wyatt Johnston point. That's a good point prop parlay that I like in that game. This should be a great game. Game two, three, and now I'm thinking four is going to stay under six and a half. So give me the under six and a half in the game between the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. And then down there in Florida, this one's a little bit more tricky because this series has been way more closely contested than maybe the three to one series score suggests. I mean, if you look at games one and two in Florida, one ended in overtime. The other was a one goal game. Even these last two games in Tampa, they were one goal games more than halfway through. So razor thin margins in this series. But one thing that we do know is these top Florida players are creating chances in all these games, both the top line kind of minus Tarasenko and the second line. And I think we should probably start on that second line because I mentioned last week, Anton Lundell, he got thrust into that second line center role and the beautiful thing in hockey he's still being priced as like a third line player. So once again, for the third straight game, if you're showing me over plus 200 for an assist for a guy who is centering for Hagee and Kachuk, who are being completely productive. If you took Lundell for an assist in both the last game and the game before that, both games without Ben, and you took either of those guys for Hagee or Kachuk, both of them registered points. So you're taking the plus 230 assist for Lundell and then a point for Verhage, or if you do a point for Kachuk, either or assist for Lundell and a point for either of those guys, those have cashed in back to back games. My feeling is you let it run till it loses. And if they're continuing to create chances and Lundell is assisting, he has one shot in the previous two games. That's why I know the point prop is great, but if he's not shooting, it's pretty much assist or nothing for me. So I'm going to take another crack at his assist and then a little separate deli slice on his assist with a Carter Verhage point. And then just like the other game, my rule is once you get to elimination games, you get to game five, you get to game six, you get to game seven. Teams try to lock things down. They don't want it to be some ruckus game. Florida plays that nasty defense that they're known for. And I think this one's going to be a tight checking game with not many penalties called. We saw a lot of penalty calls over the weekend. But in a game like this, an elimination game, as you saw how many penalties called in that Edmonton game last night, one for each team. And if you're going to tell me both teams are going to get like one power play, and remember, as the playoffs go on, the refs call fewer and fewer penalties, which is more conducive to unders. I completely understand if you don't want. We're going to hit the critical point where unders are just flowing. You're already starting to see it. Give me the under six and a half in that Lightning Florida game. That's what I have for you here on a Monday. We'll try to get this playoff thing headed in the right direction. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. My apologies to those who join the Patreon over the weekend. I'll always tell you when I had a, a bad week or a bad weekend, the same sniff process goes in when we win. The same sniff process goes in when we lose. I'll be back with you tomorrow, hopefully with a nice big fat smile on my face. Take it easy. I'll talk to you then.